Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a closer look at and of course installing the S&B cold air intake with the oiled reusable cotton filter available for the 19 and newer 5.7 Ram 1500. Now you should be checking this out if you're looking to ditch your factory intake in order to pick one up that is one of the highest quality intakes in the category with an oiled, washable, and reusable filter. Now, s and makes some of the more premium options that you can get as far as a cold air intake, has absolutely mint fitment from head to toe, and the entire assembly here is really just one of a kind. Now, this uses a completely enclosed heat shield, which is really nice for guys looking to go that extra mile to make sure that their cold air is trapped in, going right into their filter and tubing, and keeping that engine bay heat out. And not to mention, it looks really good under the hood too. It looks clean, professional, really sleek, and blends in really well with the engine bay. Now this particular option, of course, the star of the kit here is going to be your filter. Now this is an absolutely massive oiled reusable cotton filter. Now this is going to use an eight layer cotton gauze media along with a thin layer of oil to make sure it's keeping out all of the particles that you don't want getting into your engine bay while letting in more air. This is gonna help with a ton more airflow as far as volume. Of course, we know that that immediately translates to a better horsepower and torque gain, along with a better throttle response and acceleration. This particular kit is not gonna require a tune, which is great for guys looking to just open up the box, bolt it right up, and get going on the road, reaping the benefits. No need to spend any extra money going to your local tuner. This guy being a washable and reusable filter means that you get to save money in the long run. When it comes time for routine maintenance, when it comes time for this guy to get really dirty, you pop it out, wash it, re-oil it, and throw it right back in, and it's as good as new. Dry filters, on the other hand, aren't really gonna be that great as far as reusability. Sometimes you can clean them off with pressurized air, but that only goes so far, and you can only do that so many times. So if you're looking for something that's gonna last a lot longer, this is gonna be the way to go. Now, for guys located in dry climate areas, maybe seeing a lot more air pollution, this one's gonna clog up a little bit more more often, you're gonna to have to do some maintenance more frequently, but it's still a top quality filter. This actually boasts airflow increases of up to 50% over the factory intake. We'll take a closer look at this compared to the factory tubing a little bit later, along with the factory filter. The air box here and the tubing are all high intensity ABS plastic. It comes with new upgraded couplers and you're also gonna get this plexiglass lid here. See right through to your filter so you can see its condition while also trapping in that cold air. Now this guy's gonna come in right around 300 bucks, which is actually really surprising. s and making such premium stuff, I was expecting numbers in the 400 range, closer to $500, but 300 bucks gets you, in my opinion, one of the best options available. Install, one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle this in the driveway at home with about, I'd say 30, maybe 45 minutes with very simple hand tools. I'll show you guys the entire process here. What do you say we get started? All right, tools used in this install include an impact gun, a ratchet, extension, eight, 11, 12, and 13 millimeter deep sockets. I used a Phillips head socket, but a Phillips head screwdriver works just as well. A pair of snips, but scissors or something similar work. Panel removal tool and a 19 millimeter wrench. All right, first step here is to go straight above the throttle body and you'll see the breather line and the intake air temperature sensor. We're gonna disconnect both of those. Now for the breather line here, you're just gonna push up on the gray tab underneath and pull straight down and just disconnect it just like that. And then for the sensor, it's just pinch and disconnect just like that. Now we can loosen up the clamp holding the tubing to the throttle body and the tubing to the air box on the other side. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket, but a flat head works just as well. All right, so now you can lift up on the tubing, pull it off the throttle body, and pull it off of the air box as well. Set that aside. All right, so now we gotta go in our passenger side wheel well to disconnect two eight millimeter bolts holding on the bottom of the factory air box. Now they're in these little craters here in the wheel well liner. There's an eight millimeter here, and just to the right of it on a bit of an angle. So grab your eight millimeter socket and get those off. At this point, we can just head it back under the hood and pull the entire air box straight up and set it aside. All right, so now we have to work on removing this air box tray that's underneath. Now, you'll see there's a couple of hose clips around the perimeter here. We have one at the top, one down in the middle, one on the back, and then two on the front side. Now, we have to disconnect those before we can take the tray out. So you can push from the inside while pulling out. You can use a panel removal tool, whatever you see fit uh, to get these guys off. All right, so that's the back. Now we can do the front. All right, so now we can remove the four 13 millimeter bolts holding on this tray. There's two up top on this interior fender. 
and two down low in these little pockets. All right, at this point, you can lift up on the tray and pull out the air duct and set it aside. All right, so we got our factory air box off of our 5.7 RAM behind me, and it's on the table next to our S&B oiled filter option with a huge upgrade in the air box department. Now, I wanna take you through some similarities and differences between the two kits, and let's start with that filter. Now, your factory paper element filter is just that. It's a dry, flat plane paper element filter that's super standard right off the factory line from Ford, Dodge, Chevy. All the manufacturers use something similar to this. It's efficient, it's fine, it's cheap, but it's really not gonna optimize airflow. Now the oiled filter here from s &B, as you can see, is a night and day difference. This thing is absolutely massive. It's a conical eight layer cotton gauze oiled filter that's gonna help you improve airflow, but also filtration. Oiled filters like this one here are much different than paper elements that you get from the factory, but also much different from aftermarket dry filters as well. Oiled filters are typically known to be a little bit better for airflow when compared to its dry filter counterparts. Now, I mean, we're talking within a 1% difference, but nonetheless, it is a difference. Oiled filters use a little bit more of an open cotton gauze media filter, as I mentioned, compared to a dry filter is more of that paper element. The paper element's a little bit more closed. While it doesn't use oil, it doesn't allow for as much air to get through. The oiled filter here does require a little bit more maintenance because it is oiled, and the oil catches some of those particles and can clog up a little bit more frequently, requiring more maintenance than a dry filter. But if you're looking for something that's got a better airflow, this is definitely gonna be the way to go. And as you can see, the 360 degree conical filter is gonna have a lot more of a volume coming in as opposed to a flat paper element. This guy here is gonna increase airflow over the factory air box about 50 to 51%. That's a huge increase in airflow that you didn't otherwise get with your factory setup. Now that's not only because of the filter, it's also gonna be because of the rest of the intake assembly. You have an improved air box here, which is absolutely giant in comparison to your factory one. This is also gonna include a plug for the bottom of it. This plug is optional. It's also recommended to keep this off of your truck, especially if you're not in heat wave environments. This is gonna essentially open up the bottom of the air box to allow a little bit more air to get through underneath of the vehicle, as opposed to solely from the front end of the grill. Your grill has that factory air duct styling, but having that underneath plug removed is gonna give you another inlet for air. Now you can also plug it up, and it's recommended to plug it if you're in an environment that has extreme heat. If you're seeing places with extreme heat, 100 degrees and over, places like Arizona and Nevada, you might wanna plug this up to avoid sucking in more heat and heat soaking. So you have the option there and it's definitely useful to take advantage of. The rest of the tubing here is ABS plastic, which is definitely gonna help dissipate heat a little bit better. It's also a bigger diameter in tubing as compared to your factory one, so it's letting more volume in. And finally, you'll have all new couplers to make sure you have a leak-free seal. Now, all in all, closed heat shield like your factory one, but much bigger, more accepting airflow filter. It's gonna be cleanable, washable, reusable. All you have to do is re-oil it when it comes time for routine maintenance and you'll be good to go. So right now what we're gonna do is toss off a couple of the factory components, transfer over our intake air temperature sensor and a few grommets and we'll get to work. All right, so now we're gonna remove our intake air temperature sensor and in order to do that, you're gonna twist it counterclockwise to disconnect and then pull straight up. You can wiggle it back and forth just to make sure it dislodges. Set that down, now we can put our factory tubing aside. Now with our new tubing, you can see this is the spot here for the sensor. It also comes with a new grommet. You're gonna drop that into place, making sure the tab lines up with the tab on the tubing. Push that guy in, it kind of clicks into place. Now you can grab your factory sensor and you're gonna drop it in. All right, it only lines up one way. So once you get it in there, you're gonna twist and lock it into place. Now we can install our breather line fitting. That's gonna go right into this threaded hole here. So we're gonna get it hand tight and then grab our wrench and give it another turn or two to get it snug. All right, so now you can grab your 19 millimeter wrench and tighten it up. All right, you don't wanna go too tight and strip it out. Maybe two, two and a half turns will do the trick. Now we can install our coupler onto the throttle body side of our new tubing here. And the throttle body side is of course gonna be where that temperature sensor is. So I'm gonna pop this guy on with one of our clamps pre-installed. All right, and then grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead and tighten it down. Next, we're gonna install our larger grommet or silicone coupler onto our air box. Now go to the circle hole in the air box here. We're gonna install this so that this little 
adapter ring. This indent here is on the inside. We're gonna install it from the inside facing out. So this is gonna make life a little easier. Now, there's a little split in the middle there that's gonna hug uh, the ring in this air box. Perfect, there we go. It's a bit of a struggle, but it gets in there. Next, we can install our air duct. Now, this little air duct tubing is gonna go right into the square opening in our heat shield. Now, you wanna make sure it's angled up because it can be angled down, so you wanna make sure this is facing up. You wanna grab the 11 millimeter bolts along with the split and flat washers, and you're gonna bolt them down from the inside going into the threaded holes in the air duct. Perfect. Grab your ratchet or your impact gun and tighten these down. So now we can line up these holes in the grommet to the holes in the air duct outlet. Put that in there, grab the plastic rivets, and you're gonna slide these in to those open holes. All right, so the way this works is you'll have one rivet on the outside and one going on the inside. Now, you'll see that they snap in together like that. I'm not gonna push them all in, but they'll snap in together just like this, and you'll push them together. Now, what you'll wanna do is take note of which orientation or which direction the outside one is going in so that you can do the opposite on the inside. So if this one I'm putting in horizontally, Push this guy in. You wanna make sure that the inside one is facing up vertically so that they snap in together. There we go. And then just push them together. So now we can take our rubber grommets and go onto the other side that has this opening here. Now this is where you can put that plug if you'd want it there. We're gonna leave it out because it is recommended to leave it out for better airflow. Now grab these grommets and we're gonna insert them into those open holes similar to the larger grommet we did uh, where our air filter will go. Now we can head under the hood and we're gonna put in our air box. Now you wanna make sure you're feeding in that air intake tube first, the air duct, and connect it to the factory duct coming out of the grill. Make sure that is fully seated and you'll line up the grommets on the sides to the fender well bolts, the 13 millimeters that we removed earlier. Just make sure that they're lined up. Grab the factory 13 millimeter bolts and put them through. All right, so we're only gonna be using two of them. The factory intake used four of them, but two of those holes are now blocked. So we'll only use the bottom left and the top right. All right, so now you can tighten them down. All right, so now the bolts that were in the wheel well, we're gonna go top down instead of bottom up. So grab the little bolts included in the kit along with a washer. You may have to push the air box in a certain direction to get them to line up. Line them up with those bottom holes and put these through. Once you have that lined up, go into the wheel well, put the nuts on and tighten them down. All right, so now from in the wheel well, I'm gonna put on one of the washers and our nylon lock nut on each of the studs. Now to tighten them down, you'll have to go one arm under the hood and one arm in the wheel well with a ratchet and a socket or a wrench and a ratchet, whatever your combination is, tighten them down. All right, so now we can put our tubing assembly on. It's gonna go into the air box. And once that's in, you can line it up to your throttle body and pop it in. All right, so now we can rotate this connect it to the throttle body with our clamp installed and tighten that clamp down. All right, so now you can grab your filter, making sure that, that chrome line there in the filter media is facing down. Make sure you have the clamp over the filter inlet. And we're gonna tighten it down. All right, so now we can head to the back of our tubing Connect your breather line. Now it's gonna to go to that chrome fitting that we put on on the table earlier. They'll just snap in together and you can grab your intake air temperature sensor harness and plug that in. All right, so now we're taking a look at this lid here. Now you'll see this channel all around the edging. That's where this weather stripping is going to install. That's gonna help make sure that it's locking in the cold air and none of the heat is seeping through that lid that we'll put on in a second. So we're just gonna feed this into that channel all the way around. 
Right. If you get to the end and there's excess, you can just snip the excess so these guys meet right at each other. Or All right, so now this plate here is your, your lid, your cover. It's gonna go on just like that. Now before we do that, make sure you have a microfiber or something on you to clean off the underside. You wanna get rid of all the fingerprints so it's not you know, ugly looking when you install it because once it's on, you're not gonna be able to clean the bottom of it. From here, flip it over and set it into place. Line up the open holes with the threaded holes on the lid Grab your washer and screws, and I'm gonna use a Phillips head socket on my uh, impact gun here. I'm gonna tighten the screw down to that washer, just enough to get the threading to hook onto the threading in the air box. And then you can tighten it down. Now I'm not gonna tighten that down all the way just yet. I wanna make sure all of them get in place. All right, so once everything lines up where you want it, tighten these guys down. All right, at that point, you can take your microfiber and clean off the top of the lid. And from there, you're good to go. So that's gonna wrap up my review and install for the S&B cold air intake with the oiled reusable cotton filter available for your 19 and newer 5.7 Ram. And again, guys, if you're looking for a completely sealed air box, a high quality oiled reusable and washable filter, pick yours up right here at americantrucks.com. <laughs>